So welcome to all of you. DSPPL is organizing this full moon and new moon programs as a part of its social empowerment platform. We invite different eminent speaker, dignitaries and experts from different fields so that our participants can get different insights into their day-to-day -day life. Now it's the month of February and March and as all of us know, just say, I'm sub logo ko pata hai, February, March, ye sare exam oriented, examination ki taraf leke jane wale mahine hai. Aur bahut bar hamne dekha hai ki students examination ka bahut hi jada pressure le lete hai. Examination, instead of becoming an opportunity to evaluate how much progress we have done as far as academic studies are concerned, it becomes something like a stress event. कई बार तो मैंने देखा है कि बच्चों की पढ़ाई भी अच्छी हुई है पर फिर भी उनके पेरेंट्स को बहुत ज्यादा टेंशन आ जाता है तो बच्चे तो मस्त है एकदम तैयारी भी अच्छी कर रहे हैं पढ़ाई भी अच्छी हो रही है और ये कोई भी एग्जामिनेशन हो 10th स्टैंडर्ड का हो 12th स्टैंडर्ड का हो इंजीनियरिंग का हो पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन का हो या और भी कोई एग्जामिनेशन हो ये हमेशा देखा जाता है कि फॉर वन और दी अदर रीजन एग्जामिनेशन ब्रिंग्स lot of stress, lot of tension for that particular candidate as well as for the family. So, we will talk about this today, we will try to know and try to know. Our two eminent speakers are Dr. Shirish Sane and Dr. Aparna Ashtaputre Sisole. So, I welcome both of you. Welcome on behalf of DSPPL. Hearty welcome to both of you. और आपसे हम आज जानने की कोशिश करेंगे कि एग्जामिनेशन के लिए ठीक से तैयारी कैसे करनी हॉलिस्टिक प्रिपरेशन फॉर एग्जामिनेशन आज के जो हमारे दो इमिनेंट स्पीकर्स हैं उनका मैं ऑफिशियल इंट्रोडक्शन भी करता हूं हमारी पहली स्पीकर है डॉक्टर अपर्णा अष्टपुत्रे शी इज एम ए इन साइकोलॉजी एम फिल वो एचओडी है साइकोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अंबेडकर मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी औरंगाबाद आल्सो एक्टिंग एज अ गाइड फॉर पीएचडी स्टूडेंट्स फॉर द साइकोलॉजी सब्जेक्ट शी हैज ऑथर्ड मेनी बुक्स ऑन काउंसलिंग साइकोलॉजी एंड पेरेंटिंग एंड शी हैज बीन अवार्डेड द्रोणाचार्य अवार्ड बाय द लायंस क्लब एज वेल एज बेस्ट टीचर अवार्ड बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन ऑफ मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी so welcome aparna ji on this particular forum on behalf of dsppl warm welcome to you our second distinguished faculty is dr shirish sane his phd in computer engineering from pune university mtech in computer science and engineering from prestigious iit mumbai he is acting chairman of board of studies in computer applications in Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University, HOD of Computer Engineering Department of reputed KK Wag Institute of Engineering Education and Research, Nasik. He has conducted many seminars across several entities and geographies and also been awarded as Best Teacher Award by the Lions Club. So Dr. Shiri Sane, warm welcome to you also on this particular forum. और आप दोनों से हम थोड़ा ये जानना चाहेंगे हमारे ऑडियंस के लिए कि हाउ टू प्रिपेयर होलिस्टिकली फॉर दिस एग्जामिनेशन आप तो दोनों एक्सपर्ट है इस विषय पे बहुत बार आपने इंडिविजुअल बेसिस पे या पेरेंट्स के साथ या फिर बहुत बहुत फोरम पे चर्चा भी की होगी पर फिर भी एक कॉमन प्लेटफॉर्म हो कुछ कॉमन क्वेश्चन हो इसके लिए हमने कुछ पॉइंटर्स निकाले हैं and I will also would like to share those pointers with you. कि हम exactly आपसे जो जानना चाहते हैं, आपका guidance जो चाहिए, वो basically ये pointers के ऊपर चाहिए, so that students can benefit and they can prepare well for their upcoming examinations. So आपका ज़्यादा वक्त नहीं लूँगा, 
आज का ये जो सेशन रहेगा तो पहले अपर्णा जी को मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि आप गाइडेंस करें उसके बाद हम डॉक्टर श्री साने सर के साथ जाएंगे और उसके बाद बाद में गुरु जी भी है और लास्ट अंत में क्वेश्चन आंसर्स भी रहेंगे सो फोरम इज ओपन टू यू डॉक्टर अपर्णा जी सो ओवर टू यू हाउ टू प्रिपेयर हॉलिस्टिकली फॉर एग्जामिनेशन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी हैविंग मी ऑन दिस फोरम it's really nice to interact before exams and uh, so preparing for exam before going for preparation i just want to ask everyone to just think because as it is online i cannot ask you or like listen to you but later on we can definitely have discussion but uh, the first question comes in my mind when we talk about exam is what is exam kya hai pariksha kya hai तो मुझे लगता है ये मॉन्स्टर है क्या क्योंकि बचपन से मुझे तो ऐसे ही बताया गया है कि बापरे परीक्षा है कोई ऐसा नहीं किसी ने ऐसा नहीं बोला कि वाह नाउ यू हैव एन एग्जाम सो गुड नो बडी स्माइल्ड एंड टोल्ड मी सबने ऐसा बोला कि बापरे अभी परीक्षा है हाँ बहुत सीरियसली करना है सो एवरी वन मेड मी प्रेशराइज कि ये कुछ तो लाइक इट इज इट इज रियली अ डिस्टर्बिंग थिंग ये कुछ ऐसा है जिससे मुझ में क्या कमी है वो समझ में आएगी और कोई नहीं चाहेगा कि अपने में कुछ कमी हो नो बडी वुड लाइक टू नो और थिंक दैट आई एम नॉट गुड इनफ एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स टू बी गुड सो द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट थिंग फॉर एवरी वन एग्जाम इज रियली रियली वेरी गुड थिंग बहुत अच्छी चीज है जो बच्चे होंगे आई वुड लाइक टू आज दैम कि अगर आप कुछ नई चीज आपको समझ में आती है जैसे आप गेम्स खेल रहे हो और गेम्स में आपको एक ना शॉर्ट की पता चलती है कि ये इस तरीके से मैं अगर करता हूं तो द गेम इज वेरी गुड सो वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर दिस विथ अदर्स एंड टीच अदर्स एंड टेल अदर्स एंड द आंसर वुड बी जनरली येस वॉट एवर आई हैव लर्न आई रियली वॉन्ट टू नो दैट वॉट एवर आई हैव लर्न इज गुड और नॉट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर मैं चाय बनाना सीखती हूँ तो मैं चाहूंगी कि मैं चाय बनाऊ और किसी को तो पिलाऊ चाय और देखू की हाँ मैंने जो सीखा है वो अच्छे से हुआ है कि नहीं हुआ है सो एग्जाम इज लाइक दैट सो द फर्स्ट लाइक द फर्स्ट पॉइंट लाइक प्री एग्जाम द फर्स्ट थॉट शुड बी और वी शुड स्टार्ट थिंकिंग इन दिस वे दैट एग्जाम आर समथिंग विच विल टेल मी दैट यस आई एम गुड इन दिस only this much is what I need to really work more जो जो भी मैंने सीखा है वो कितना अच्छा सीखा है यही मुझे बस देखना है तो एग्जाम को इस नजरिए से अगर हम लोग देखते हैं कि एग्जाम आर जस्ट टू चेक माई सेल्फ वॉट एवर आई एम डूइंग इट इज जस्ट चेकिंग ओके आई हैव डन नॉट हम लोग अगर बाहर गांव जाते हैं बैग भरते हैं तो वी चेक इट कि हाँ ये 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 चीजें ली है कि सो एग्जाम आर लाइक यू यू आर गोइंग ऑन अ जर्नी लाइफ जर्नी सो बिफोर गोइंग ऑन द लाइफ जर्नी दीज आर द थिंग्स यू शुड नो सो इफ यू नो इट इट इज रियली वेरी गुड अदरवाइज यू कैन स्टिल लर्न ऐसा नहीं है कि अगर ये मेरे को कम आ गया मुझे कम मार्क्स आ गए ऐसे कुछ हुआ तो मैं उसको इम्प्रूव नहीं कर सकती इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट सो द फर्स्ट थिंग वट आई फील इज बिफोर एग्जाम वी हैव टू जस्ट हैव दिस पॉजिटिव अप्रोच की वॉट एवर आई हैव लर्न आई एम जस्ट चेकिंग इट चेकिंग वॉट आर देयर इन द बॉक्स इन द बैग ऑफ माइंड फॉर गोइंग टू ट्रेवल द लाइफ एज अ जर्नी सो दिस इज वॉट आई वुड लाइक टू एड and can we go to sane sir or should i complete the things i, I think madam you you can complete okay okay so this was the first thing uh, that i wanted to uh, share with you the second is like how to prepare a day before D day before exam suppose tomorrow is my exam so what should i do um see this this positive approach will slowly we will learn it i don't expect it ki aaj maine bataya hai aur aap phatak se yahi approach mein aa jao aisa nahi hoga par jab bhi aapke dimag mein aata hai ki bhap re exam to just tell ki mere ko suitcase mein kya hai mujhe check karna hai that is the only thing abhi exams hai uske pehle din mujhe kya karna hai what i need to do sabse pehle aap shant baitho और जो भी आपका सिलेबस है वॉट एवर सिलेबस इज देयर जस्ट चेक द सिलेबस और टिक मार्क करते जाओ कि हाँ मैंने ये पढ़ा है ये पढ़ा है ये पढ़ा है एंड देन डू वन रिविजन और खुद को बताओ मुझे क्या आता है वॉट आई नो यू टेल योर सेल्फ इन विच आई एम गुड वॉट आर दिंग्स दैट आई कैन डू गुड 
कि मैं अच्छा लिख सकता हूँ आई हैव अ गुड पेन सो माई हैंड राइटिंग वुड बी गुड ऑल दिस थिंग आई हैव प्रिपेयर एवरी थिंग माई हॉल टिकेज इज इन टैक्ट वॉट एवर गुड थिंग्स आर देयर दैट वी शुड रिमाइंड टू अवर सेल्फ दिस इज एज अ पर्सन इफ आई एम गोइंग फॉर एग्जाम नाउ the environment in the house should also be like uh, similar to it bacche ko us din mat batao ki aap kya kharab karte ho bacche ko wo batao ki aap kis mein acche ho see when when a child gets a positive feedback from the parents to jo bhi uska self confidence hai na wo wo kam nahi hoga surely agar aap usko exam ke pehle din bolte maine to bola tha tumne padhai karni chahiye thi kuch nahi kiya ab dekho don't do this this is not the time to tell the child where he is not good this is the time to ch- tell the child that ki you are good and you can do it so environment bhi hum log rakhenge ki positive ho बहुत ज्यादा पैम्परिंग ना हो अभी पॉजिटिव का मतलब ये भी हो जाता है कि पेरेंट्स क्या करते हैं ना इतना ज्यादा अच्छा अच्छा बोलते हैं कि बच्चे को पता चलता है कि ये झूठ बोल रहे किड्स आर मच क्लेवर द नस सो बी पॉजिटिव बट बी रियलिस्टिक दूसरा मुझे क्या करना है आई विल ट्राई टू अवॉइड द थिंग्स विच आई हैव नॉट लर्न टिल नाउ मैंने अभी तक वो चैप्टर कभी भी नहीं पढ़ा और कल एग्जाम है और मैं आज पढ़ रही हूँ तो वी विल ट्राई टू अवॉइड इट लास्ट मिनट में मेमोरी बहुत ज्यादा काम नहीं करेगी सो so, उस पर एनर्जी इन्वेस्ट um, करने से अच्छा है कि जो मुझे आता है वो मैं हंड्रेड परसेंट करूं मतलब लाइक इफ यू हैव अ सिलेबस हंड्रेड मार्क्स का सिलेबस है उसमें से सेवेंटी मार्क्स का ही मुझे आता है थर्टी मार्क्स का मुझे नहीं आता है तो मेक श्योर sure कि ये सेवेंटी परसेंट या जो सेवेंटी मार्क्स है उसमें से एक भी मार्क मेरा नहीं जाना चाहिए सो यू डू द रिविजन और ऐसा कुछ टाइम निकाले कि जो ये थर्टी परसेंट है उसको मैं एक बार ओवर लुक करूं ताकि अगर कुछ आता है तो एटलीस्ट मैं कुछ अटेम्प्ट कर पाऊं बट द मैक्सिमम फोकस अ डे बिफोर एग्जाम शुड बी ऑन व्हाट आई नो तो ये करना है उसके बाद खाना जो आपको हमेशा आप खाते हो वही खाइए बिकॉज सी हेल्दी फूड खाइए बिकॉज हमारी बॉडी में जो पूरा मैं आपको याद क्यों आएगा बिकॉज द ग्लूकोज लेवल इन द ब्रेन इज हाई एंड ऑक्सीजन लेवल इज हाई देन ओनली योर ब्रेन विल वर्क इफेक्टिवली और वो अच्छा काम करने के लिए आपको गाड़ी में अच्छा पेट्रोल डालना पड़ेगा अगर आपके पास पावर का पेट्रोल है तो प्लीज पावर का ही पेट्रोल डालिए ताकि इंजिन अच्छा काम करे आप उसमें कैरोसिन मिक्स वाला पेट्रोल ना डाले सो लाइक अ डे बिफोर योर एग्जाम प्लीज डोंट ईट एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ जंक फूड क्योंकि वो जंक फूड से लाइक ओनली फ्यू मिनट्स फॉर फ्यू फ्यू मिनट्स यू विल बी एक्साइटेड एंड देन योर ब्रेन विल गेट एग्जॉस्टेड सो अ डे बिफोर एग्जाम जो भी आपका रूटीन रहा है खाने का वही रखिए ट्राई कीजिए कि आप हेल्दी खाना खाएं जिसमें जिससे आपको अच्छे से जो न्यूट्रिय है वो मिले ताकि आपका ब्रेन अच्छे से काम करे सो अ डे बिफोर exam this would be this should be the uh, things that we need to uh, remember remember ourselves remind ourselves now this third question or the third thing that was uh, that i need to highlight is like precaution while writing an answer paper do tarike se hum log ja sakte hain pehla tarika hota hai aapke hath mein question paper aata hai you read the question paper complete you tick mark the questions that That the answers you know, आप टिक मार्क करें और जो सबसे अच्छा आंसर आपको होता है उससे आप स्टार्ट करें सो दिस इज द वन थिंग सेकेंड थिंग है आपके हाथ में पेपर आता है रीड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इफ यू नो द फर्स्ट आंसर ऑफ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन स्टार्ट राइटिंग फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन नहीं आता है छोड़ दीजिए सेकेंड पे जाइए आता है लिखिए अभी ये दो तरीके हैं दोनों के अपने अपने पॉजिटिव और निगेटिव थिंग्स है मैं दोनों के बताती हूँ जब आप पेपर आपके हाथ में आता है और जब आप पूरा क्वेश्चन पेपर पढ़ते हो तब उसमें आपका टाइम जाता है आपका वक्त जाएगा पूरा पेपर पढ़ने में उसके बाद सेकंड क्या होगा कि कुछ आंसर्स आपको आएंगे कुछ आंसर्स नहीं आएंगे तो नहीं आने वाले आंसर्स पे अगर आप फोकस करते हो तो आपका सेल्फ जो है वो सेल्फ स्टीम नीचे चला जाएगा एंड देन यू विल स्टार्ट थिंकिंग की मुझे कुछ नहीं आता है थॉट प्रोसेस विल गो इन निगेटिव वे पर अगर आप क्वेश्चन पेपर पढ़ते हो और मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस के आंसर्स आपको आते हैं देन इट विल बूस्ट योर कॉन्फिडेंस एंड देन इट विल हेल्प यू इन राइटिंग एग्जाम 
अगर आप पेपर आते ही लिखना शुरू करते हो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज यूल सेव द टाइम कि ऐसे ही आपको बिना पढ़े तो आप लिखने हो लिखने वाले हो नहीं सो इट्स बेस्ट वे दैट यू फर्स्ट रीड द क्वेश्चन एंड स्टार्ट आंसरिंग विच एवर यू वॉन्ट विच एवर यू थिंक इज द दैट यू कैन आंसर वेरी वेल सो दिस इज द पैटर्न वी शुड फॉलो अगर आपके पास टाइम का कंस्ट्रेन है तो देन स्टार्ट रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन एंड राइटिंग द आंसर रादर देन गोइंग थ्रू ऑल क्वेश्चन पर आपके पास टाइम का कंस्ट्रेंट नहीं है आपके पास मतलब काफी टाइम है एट्टी मार्क्स का पेपर है और यू हैव थ्री आवर्स सो लॉट ऑफ टाइम इज देर तो आप उस तरीके से करते हो या और एक और एक मेथड आप कर सकते हो जैसे आपको पता है कि कितने क्वेश्चन आने वाले हैं आपके पास कितना टाइम है नाउ वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन गिव टाइम टू एवरी क्वेश्चन अभी तो पैटर्न भी सेट होता है कि कौन से लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन होते हैं कौन से शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन होते हैं कितने ऑब्जेक्टिव आते हैं तो यू नो एवरीथिंग द पेपर पैटर्न आपको पता होता है तो आप उस तरीके से अपना टाइम डिवाइड कीजिए कि सपोज पांच क्वेश्चन है एंड यू हैव थ्री आवर्स तो हर एक को अगर आप डिवाइड करोगे उस हिसाब से कि दस मिनट आते हैं पंद्रह मिनट आते हैं इससे होगा क्या कि उतना टाइम आपको वो क्वेश्चन को देना है देन यू हैव टू स्टॉप इट एंड गो टू द अदर क्वेश्चन अगर पूरा भी नहीं होता है तो फिर भी उसको जगह छोड़ के नेक्स्ट पे जाइए क्योंकि बाकी जो आपने शेड्यूलिंग किया है टाइम का उसमें अगर बच जाता है तो यू कैन कम बैक टू दिस क्वेश्चन बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि मुझे पेपर आंसर आते थे पर मुझे टाइम ही नहीं मिला तो यू हैव टू थिंक इन दैट वे कि मुझे ये सारे सवालों के जवाब देने हैं तो उस तरीके से मैं उसको उसको चंग्स में कट करूं और देन आई कैन राइट द आंसर सो दिस विल रियली हेल्प अस कि व्हेन व्हेन द टाइम कंस्ट्रेन इज देयर सो दिस कैन रियली हेल्प व्हेन जस्ट स्टार्ट रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन इफ यू नो प्लीज डू राइट एंड इफ यू हैव फाइव क्वेश्चन टेन क्वेश्चन वॉट नंबर डिवाइड एंड एट लीस्ट कीप टेन मिनट्स अ बफर टाइम बफर टाइम क्यों है जैसे मैंने कहा कि आप फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन लिख रहे हैं आपका टाइम खत्म हो गया है और आपका थोड़ा ही रह गया बट देन यू लीव इट एंड देन गो टू द अदर क्वेश्चन एंड देन द लास्ट टेन मिनट्स यू कैन कम बैक टू दैट क्वेश्चन एंड राइट डाउन द रिमेनिंग वन और यू कैन रीड इट आप एक बार पूरा कोई आंसर शीट जो है आपका आप पढ़ सकते हो सो so, जब आप टाइम uh, डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हो दैट टाइम इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू कैन कीप टेन मिनट बफर टाइम अगर 15 मिनट्स 15 मिनट्स कर सकते हो दैट इज रियली वेरी गुड बट नहीं तो एटलीस्ट 10 मिनट्स नहीं तो पेपर लेने को आता है तब तक हम लिख रहे होते हैं कुछ तो जस्ट वी स्क्रिबल इट आउट सो डोंट डू दैट द टाइम शेड्यूल इज बीन रियली डिजाइन वेरी इफेक्टिवली ओनली दैट मच इज नीडेड अगर क्वेश्चन कितने मार्क का है उसको कितना आंसर करना चाहिए दैट ऑल्सो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेल यू आर राइटिंग अ पेपर आंसर पेपर कि अगर दो मार्क्स का है तो उसके लिए कितना लिखना है दस मार्क्स का है तो उसके लिए कितना लिखना है सो इट इज वेरी स्पेसिफाइड मतलब दो मार्क का क्वेश्चन है पर मुझे आता है तो मैं एक पूरा पेज नहीं लिखूंगी देन देयर आई विल वेस्ट माई टाइम बिकॉज मैक्सिमम कितना टू ही मार्क्स मिलेंगे सो यू नो हाउ मच यू हैव टू राइट फॉर टू मार्क्स आई नो दिस यू माइट बी नोइंग आई एम जस्ट रिपीटिंग इट अगेन बट देन यू वेन एवर वेन वी आर राइटिंग आंसर दिस मे स्किप बहुत बार ऐसा हो जाता है कि आपको वो आंसर आता है पर वो दो मार्क के लिए पूछा है बट यू नो इट एंड यू लाइक इट सो यू मे गो ऑन राइटिंग फॉर अ पेज और समथिंग लिख दैट सो यू हैव टू रिमाइंड यूर सेल्फ की नहीं है दो मार्क के लिए मुझे ये शायद ये थेरी बहुत पसंद है पर ये मुझे लिखनी नहीं है सो दैट इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन वी आर राइटिंग एन आंसर शीट देन एज आई टॉक्ट अबाउट द प्रायोरिटीज ऑफ द क्वेश्चन हाउ टू प्रायोरिटाइज इट सो दीज आर दू मेथड थ्रू विच वी कैन गो नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द लास्ट पॉइंट वॉज लाइक हाउ टू कीप द माइंड सेट सो दिस इज दिस इज रियली रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट माइंड सेट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग पॉजिटिव सोचिए पर पॉजिटिव कैसे सोचे हाँ, क्योंकि दिमाग में तो ऐसे ही आता है ना कि भाई क्या होगा पता नहीं ये पेपर ऐसा गया मैं नहीं चाहती हूँ निगेटिव सोचना कोई नहीं चाहता है निगेटिव सोचना पर हम सोचते नहीं है वो आ जाते हैं राइट वी डोंट वी डोंट इनवाइट देम दे कम सो व्हाट आई नीड टू डू तो मैं उसको और छोटा करती हूँ हमारे पॉजिटिव थॉट से पहले या पॉजिटिव या निगेटिव थॉट से भी पहले ना एक सेल्फ टॉक नाम के कंसेप्ट है हम खुद से बात करते हैं आप अभी मेरी बात सुन रहे हो फिर भी बैकग्राउंड में कुछ ना कुछ आपके चल रहा है सो यू आर टॉकिंग टू योर सेल्फ कि हाँ ये ठीक बोल रही है हाँ मैं तो ऐसे करता हूँ हाँ मुझे तो मालूम है सो वी ऑल आर 
talking to ourselves. That is what a self-talk. Now, this self-talk is very, very important. Research says that 95% of our self-talk is negative. And that is uh, wired in that way. If I want to change it, I want to, I need to cut the wires and, and have a positive talk. तो जब भी आप सेल्फ टॉक करते हो सबसे पहले तो हमको ध्यान में डालना पड़ेगा कि मैं सेल्फ टॉक करती हूँ मैं अपने आप से बातें करती हूँ जोर से नहीं करती हूँ पर अंदर अंदर चलता है राइट और वो हम लोग पूरे सेंटेंस में बात नहीं करते वी डोंट टॉक इन सेंटेंस वी टॉक इन शॉर्ट हैंड लैंग्वेज एक वर्ड दो वर्ड मे बी सिर्फ हम्म बोल देते हैं कि हम्म तो लाइक यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इट मीन्स कि हाँ या नहीं है सो यू डोंट हैव टू सेव सेंटेंस इज कम्प्लीटिव एन वी आर टॉकिंग टू अवर सेल्फ सो वी हैव शॉर्ट हैंड कीज वेन वी आर टॉकिंग टू अवर सेल्फ सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू हैव टू जस्ट रिकोगनाइज दैट आई एम आई एम हैविंग अ सेल्फ टॉक विच इज निगेटिव लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप एग्जाम के uh, जा रहे हो और uh, आपकी गाड़ी स्टार्ट नहीं हो रही है आप पहले एक घंटा जल्दी निकल रहे हो कि कुछ हो गया तो जल्दी जाए पर फिर भी आपकी गाड़ी स्टार्ट नहीं हो रही तो आपके दिमाग में आता है क्या कि नहीं हो जाएगी स्टार्ट कुछ नहीं होता है नहीं हमारे दिमाग में आज ही होना था स्टार्टिंग ही ऐसी हो गई द स्टार्ट ऑफ माय पेपर इज लाइक दिस हाउ वी लेट वी स्टार्ट वी स्टार्ट गोइंग और ये इतना फास्ट होता है कि जैसे अगर हम लोग बोले कि ऐसे आप हम लोग बात कर रहे हैं तो एक मिनट में हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी वर्ड हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी वर्ड हम लोग बोलते हैं सिक्सटी टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी ये रेंज होता है हमारा पर हम हम जब सेल्फ टॉक करते हैं और जब हमारी एंगजाइटी ज्यादा होती है तब हम लोग 700 टू 800 वर्ड्स बोलते हैं एक मिनट में सो इट इज सो वेरी फास्ट तो हमको सबसे पहले क्या करना है स्लो डाउन करना है उसको चेंज करना इतना आसान नहीं होता है तो हम लोग फटाक से वहां नहीं जाएंगे तो हम लोग क्या करेंगे सिर्फ स्लो डाउन करेंगे कैसे स्लो डाउन करेंगे जब भी कुछ दिमाग में आता है कि गाड़ी अब स्टार्ट नहीं होनी थी रुको just tell yourself calm slow and for that uh, this breathing exercise really helps so if aap jo bhi kar rahe ho na breathing slow kijiye kyunki slow breathing karenge to apne aap jo process hai wo slow ho jayega wo bhi nahi hota hai to jaise maine kaha ki bas stop kijiye ruko bolna hai aapko to ye jo self talk hai na ye bahut zyada zaruri hai to hum log kya karenge agar aaj mera paper khatam ho jata hai now it is finished कुछ नहीं होने वाला है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप आपको दूध पीना था और आपके मम्मी ने उसका दही बना दिया आप घर आते हो और मम्मी को बोलते नहीं मुझे दूध ही चाहिए अभी मम्मी बोलती कि नहीं अभी दूध खत्म हो गया है आज दही है तो मैं उसके आपको छाछ बना के देती हूँ पर आप बोलते नहीं उसको आप चेंज नहीं कर सकते दूध का दही बन गया है आपका जो पेपर है वो आपने दे दिया है नाउ यू के नॉट डू एनीथिंग अबाउट इट आपको क्या कर सकते हो आप वो दही जो है उसकी छाछ बना सकते हो सो नाउ वॉट वंस द पेपर इज ओवर इट इज गिवन नाउ यू के नॉट डू एनी थिंग सो वंस इट इज गॉन जस्ट टेल द सेल्फ टॉक इट इज ओवर नाउ जस्ट काम शांत बैठो कुछ नहीं होगा राइट right? तो शांत बैठना इज बहुत जरूरी है and then again the same the after like aapka dusra paper hai to uske pehle kya karna hai jo hum logo ne pehle paper ke pehle kiya tha same thing shant rahiye self talk jo hai us pe hum log agar zyada dhyan dete hain aur usko shant rakhne ki koshish karte hain uske liye alag alag technique hum apne aap nikal sakte hain main sirf ek technique aapse share karti hu aur fir rukungi hamara ek student tha और हम लोग लाइक वी बिलोंग टू औरंगाबाद और मोस्टली वी स्पीक इन इंग्लिश हमारे पास जो मराठी सॉरी जो स्टूडेंट्स आते हैं वो भी मराठी मीडियम से होते हैं मोस्टली और हम लोग उनको लेके गए थे एक वर्कशॉप के लिए चेन्नई में तो चेन्नई एवरी वन वेर स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश और हमारा एक स्टूडेंट था एंड ही वॉज नोडिंग हिज हेड एंड वेरी हैप्पीली स्माइलिंग एंड आई वॉज वेरी हैप्पी कह रहे इसको समझ में आ रहा है एंड ही इज लाइक मुझे ऐसे लग रहा था इसको सबको बोर हो जाएगा ये इंग्लिश में है बट ही वॉज वेरी काम एंड कॉन्फिडेंट एंड सिटिंग एंड आई सेट कि रामेश्वर सगड़ा समझता है तुला सब समझ में आ रहा है उसने कहा नहीं मैडम 
मैंने कहा देन वाई यू स्माइलिंग एंड मूडिंग यू आर नॉट एंशियस बिकॉज अदर्स आर एंशियस की समझ में नहीं आ रहा है तो उसने कहा कि मैडम मैंने मैंने ट्राई किया एक सेशन पर मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा था तो मेरी एंजाइटी बढ़ गई तो अब मैं क्या करता हूँ अपने आप मन में गाने बोलता हूँ तो क्या होता है मैं अपना शांत रहता हूँ तो जितना समझ सकता हूँ मैं समझ पाता हूँ अगर मैं एंजाइटी बढ़ा देता हूँ मैं उसने मराठी में एंग्जाइटी नहीं बोला उसने कहा कि मीजा अस्वस्थ जालो तो जो भी मुझे समझ रहा है वो भी मुझे समझ में नहीं आएगा so what he has done he has stopped his negative self talk by generating by um, focusing on some other things so that his or her his anxiety was reduced तो हम क्या हम लोग ऐसा कर सकते हैं कि जब हमारी सेल्फ टॉक के वजह से एंग्जाइटी बढ़ रही है वो हम लोग कन्वर्ट करें वो सेल्फ टॉक को हम लोग कुछ और इसमें अगर डाल सकते हैं तो दैट वुड बी अ रियली ग्रेट थिंग यू कैन रिमेन काम एंड क्वाइट और जितना आप शांत रहोगे उतना आपका ब्रेन अच्छे से काम करेगा जितना आप एंशियस रहोगे उतनी गलतियां ज्यादा होगी सो टू रिमेन काम वर्क ऑन योर सेल्फ सेल्फ टॉक और बाकी पेपर का लिखना पढ़ाई दैट वी हैव टॉक बट दिस इज वॉट आई रियली वॉन्टेड टू एड सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर लिस्निंग मी सो पेशेंटली ओवर टू यू एंड देन आफ्टर दिस सेशन आई थिंक विल हैव क्वेश्चन आंसर इफ यू हैव थैंक यू सो मच यस यस थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम फॉर ऑल ऑल दिस गाइडेंस आई हैव रिसीव फ्यू क्वेश्चन एंड आई हैव लिस्टेड माई क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो and uh, we will be definitely having the question and answers in the end of the session and now uh, i will request dr shirish sane sane sir yeah am i audible yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yes sir. slightly low on the bandwidth so i am keeping my video in the uh, video okay, is sir. not turned on yeah okay as soon as i find the bandwidth is okay i'll turn it out okay yeah so thanks for inviting great to be on this platform and uh, i agree with uh, my co speaker dr aparna madam for his thought on different points uh, i would like to uh, just quickly go through some of my thoughts on this subject <clears throat> we already know exams are really important but uh, why they are important because it's a uh, opportunity as rightly said to demonstrate your knowledge but uh, i also feel from the evaluator's point of view examinations are the tools excellent tools to evaluate the understanding of the knowledge the attitude of the students overall personality of the students the desire to learn design to desire to explore and most importantly for me is what are knowledge that is learned by a student how much he is capable to apply so one might wonder how attitude can be evaluated or oral personality can be evaluated but uh, examinations are this kind of tools in fact it is also a tool for a educational institute because it acts as a feedback and tells us whether some improvement is required and if at all it is there where it is actually to be done if i have to talk about higher educational institute higher education uh, basically the examinations and the higher educational institutions they use the exam to determine if the students will be able to meet the job expectations in fact employers also use the academic performance in the examination as one of their criteria but then despite having so much of a uh, opportunity for the students both students and parents they have lot of pressures and lot of fear of failure and why that pressure is there is one of them is the failure in the exam is treated as a failure in life unfortunately it is not so and for parents probably 
it is a issue probably a social status if my son or daughter has not done well then probably uh, as a parent i start thinking something else from a social status point of view and failures normally result into lack of confidence or student starts feeling that everything is gone everything is over i just quickly put two case studies which i know personally i have seen one case where the boy was otherwise good but has a failure in standard 12th and then i realized i i have seen that fellow lost his confidence to an extent but their parents supported that boy very nicely that failure is very small thing life is much bigger and the second case again known to very very much known to me that a girl there were two sisters up here and one of them the elder one was not doing well so good the younger one was doing uh, fantastically and unfortunately the parents have made the difference in every aspect when dealing with their child so my first point was really addressing to the parents that every child every individual is different and one did not uh, have some discrimination based on the examination performance because the girl later on throughout the life which was not doing well has uh, fairly done good in her life but then she totally saw the lack in confidence in everything what she does while coming to uh, pre examinations uh, regime i strongly believe the preparation of examination starts on day 1 when your academic year or the semester starts and the preparation happens during your class as well as when you work at home so many students feel because most of our examinations are high stake examination it is kind of a one day game but they are high stake examination with a definite pattern and so many students feel that by a short preparation they can always do good they may succeed luckily on some occasions but not always so as far as preparation is concerned one has to start it from day one and unless and until you understand the concepts understand the fundamentals probably there is a probability of you doing good in the examination will be less and then there are many theories people are talking about holistic learning and i this is a big topic but i will only shortly say that it talks about connecting the ideas so what is after all that learning is all about we always every day we learn so when we are trying to learn a new thing we need to connect the ideas which i have already learned and if we can connect them then the understanding overall understanding will improve and uh, not only that if there are different forms in with the same idea is presented that also can be fully understood by the learner <clears throat> uh, i am i am strongly i strongly feel that uh, our students if they are preparing from day 1 they are good they are bright and in fact our high stake examination in most of our affiliated environment may it be a school or be a college i feel because i was also a student some day some time they are been tested under extreme conditions why why so because some people they set curriculum a teacher will teach in the class some other teacher will set a question paper some other will assess the answer book and probably if moderation is required there will be 
third another person who will do that job look at so much of a variety and our students and i call this as a uh, testing conditions and despite of all these variations our students are those who are regularly studying they are doing good in their examination uh well as far as writing uh, the question paper uh, it's a whole game of time management one has to be good at time management and so a mock examinations will definitely surely will help them there are previous question papers made be a board 10th level board 12th level board or university one needs to uh, actually write down that uh, answers within a stipulated period because we have seen we witness there are so many students who are good they know the answer but they simply fail to manage the time and i would like to caution here thanks to covid students and younger generation in general they are they are slowly forgetting their habit of writing they find it very difficult i have seen many students nowadays especially in last one year or so they say that after 25 minutes they simply cannot write so one has to make a practice of that and i always strongly believe that you need to write your answer book in such a way that you are guiding the assessor that look here look there look there this is my way of explaining how to write the answer book uh, what i mean to say the teachers and uh, all the students if they are attending here they must be knowing that uh, teacher normally say draw neat diagrams whenever there are there is a necessity it is true because instead of writing 100 words a small picture and a diagram helps you a lot more or the assessor will know that you really know the topic which you are answering enumerate the points typically when it's a subjective examination may be a long answer kind of thing if that answer involves five six points why not to enumerate them properly and especially the keywords can be underlined so all these things will not come on the day of examination you need the practice for doing so and if you can do that practice and follow these norms by underlining the keywords enumerating the points use proper diagrams neat diagrams and so on students many a times ask me a question sir i have a very bad handwriting so will it is it going to affect my performance my clear answer to them is that yes it is agreed handwriting is a god gift but when you know the subject the handwriting will be such that anyone who is assessing your answer book can read it there may be some more time more efforts the assessor might have to take but it will not be that worse so handwriting is not issue many students have this point in their mind if they know the topic then it will automatically come and if they don't then even despite they are having a good handwriting the assessor can easily find out the quality degrades as you go from known to unknown right prioritizing the questions is quite uh, apparent because uh, there are several questions given in fact i would like to tell our students that there is lot of flexibility already given by our examination system for example students are allowed to write their answers in any order which they want imagine a examination and there are some examinations 
where you are not allowed to change the order. But that flexibility is available in most of the examinations. Infinite stationery has been provided to you. And the question paper has got many, lot of options available to you. So selecting the right option, which you know the best, is uh, the key to see that you are doing good in your oral examination. Uh, as far as uh, what to do on examination day, Madam has already told you about this, but I would like to add only few, one or two points. Based on what we see every day, even today, some examination is going on in my college. So number one, reach to your examination hall well before the time. Many students, they come at the 11th hour, even though uh, this is a well-known fact, students know also that they need to be there in the examination hall 15 minutes at least before the scheduled time, but they don't. Carry all the examination material. Pain is there, hall ticket is there, ID card is there, calculators there, so many things. Water bottle is nowadays also, right? So all these material should be carried along with you. These are uh, in addition to what whatever my co-speaker has told you about, I would like to mention this. And once the paper is over and you are out of the examination hall, just forget. Don't think about it. You can discuss Come on, after coming out of the hall, you can easily discuss with your friends. But then if you realize that you have gone wrong, don't think about it. It is gone, it is past, and it's not going to come back. So it will be always better why we not focus on the next step. So one needs some mental preparation for examinations and typically uh, high stake examinations is the reason why students have got a lot of stress. Thanks to national education policy, NEP 2020, where all the efforts are been made. In the draft, it has been clearly written that the high stake examination should go away and the entire assessment should be on the basis of continuous assessment. But it will take some time. We need to deal with high stake examinations and we need to have a positive mind and the enthusiasm in yourself that you will be doing good. But this confidence will not come into you unless you prepare daily. Unless you do a regular study, you won't be able to get that confidence. So you need to have a, a study on a regular basis, on a uh, everyday basis. How you can do that? You can have some realistic schedule that you can decide. And it may vary from person to person. I have seen some students are comfortable to study alone when they are revising and in a quiet environment. But if you ask me, I am a person who would like to have a lot of things going on around me. If I, am, I have to sit in a quiet room and to study, I may not. So individually, everybody's style varies. So you need to, or there are people who say that alone I cannot revise. I need at least one of my friend. So depending on your choice, you can do that. Many people see feel that students feel that I have attended all the lectures and I have taken the notes and then that is more than sufficient. I always feel if you can add your personal touch, make it customized to your needs, that will help you more. And uh, you at the end of this revision, you need to ensure that you have understood everything. 
if even there is some chance, you can always get it clear. So that is what I have to offer. Uh, over to Mr. Pranjil. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sunny, sir. <clears throat> thank you for guiding and letting us know that how to prepare holistically for the exam. Uh, now I have several questions in front of me. Uh, Sane sir, I would like to start asking question to you. Because you mentioned at two, three times that many exams are high stake exam. So generally as a student, this question was there in my mind, right from my academic career, that why at all as an examiner, a choice of questions is provided in the question paper. Does it really helps based on some analysis students to select a question or it adds to more complication as far as appearing for that examination is concerned. And uh, the question that I'm asking you is from two angles. Number one, as an examiner, why to have the choices in the question paper? And number two, when there are choices in the question paper, how to select the choice? Because there are many students who are having very anxious about the question. They start reading entire question paper and then come to the conclusion, oh my God, it is out of my reach. Then how to handle that particular type of situation? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, very good question, sir. Uh, basically, the options are provided. This is my personal view. Uh, when, if I, if at all, I have to set a paper, normally my objective will be to ensure that uh, uh, average student can pass and advanced students can score. So there has to be an opportunity for everyone. Second, syllabus day by day, they have become uh, thicker and thicker. Mm -hmm. It's possible that despite a good preparation, regular preparation, a student may not uh, be able to solve all of them. When I'm saying options, I'm not saying that part of the syllabus, uh, it is such that suppose there are six units or five units. And uh, I'm not talking about that kind of option where a student has studied only three out of five and then they have scored. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about probably the internal kind of options where questions are set on every topic in the syllabus, but for a particular topic, there are options given. This is my view of looking at. Uh, second, uh, is it really complicating the situation for a student? I believe those who have prepared well, it is not. In fact, they can be wise enough to select uh, which question they can attempt. My personal uh, opinion is, imagine there is one question which is somewhat theoretical and there is an internal or, there is an or for that question, which is numerical. <clears throat> I would always like to go with numerical question. Numerical. And believe and students should remember that if you are understood, then only you will have a confidence to solve numericals. If you really don't know entirely within that topic, but there is a question, so you will always go for a subjective answer, theoretical answer. I hope I answered. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. But it, it, isn't it look like a bias from the ang angle of examiner that since you are selecting a theoretical question, probably you may not be well prepared for that question. Sorry? It, isn't, isn't it sound like a bias by the examiner that against a theoretical question, if there is an option to write a numerical question, since the student is not applying, selecting the numerical question, and selecting a theoretical question, that means probably he's not sure about that particular concept. Uh, not really like that. Uh, it will definitely a case for those who are not prepared. But uh, though for those who are prepared, I always believe that getting more marks by solving numerical problem are more. That is why you get 
100 out of 100 in mathematics and mm-hmm. probably in a theoretical subject you might get somewhat lesser yeah. uh, i don't think it is really a bias in fact uh, it's a uh, normally i do experiments uh, sometimes or in uh, in our internal examinations i put all numericals and then there is a lot of lot of problems in students <laughs> because uh, to solve a numerical problem you yeah. need to be very conceptually clear about that thank you can i, can I say yes, something thank you. can i say yes sir something? please 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 in uh, corollary to what you say would there be any kind of a bias that should i would like to ask dr sani sir would there be some kind of bias for example he is numerically oriented and i choose the qualitative oriented question does he start with the bias he has this student is no good because he is not going in depth and does it affect into evaluation at all is further let us say the first question itself was i chose to address it qualitatively does it set the tone for the evaluation of the exam paper are we already in my opinion science? it will not because we are already dividing the numerical with the qualitative and we are already passing a judgment that the one who goes into numerical is probably in depth uh, student you know he knows a lot so are we are we starting with a bias in that that's my question and does it affect the performance uh, evaluation for the student uh, it should not in my opinion it should not it is just a option which is given to a student <clears throat> and typically if you are not very confident you are going for a theoretical subject i do not the theoretical answer i do not mean to say that uh, as a examiner i start getting some kind of a feeling assessment of that student that he has not prepared no not the least yeah okay yeah, because basically you are starting with the premise that the one who attempts a numerical answer is already in depth possibly i think the one who is writing qualitative also knows the subject so well you know so that's why he probably has chosen that yeah yeah in in I fact i feel it's a opportunity given by the uh, examiner you I have a choice yeah yeah i appreciate you and oh. there are students uh, who uh, do well in subjective answers also mm-hmm. but if you, by and large if uh, a study has been taken or some observation has been done then normally Uh, whatever i say that happens okay thank you thank you sir thank you so much yeah dr apparada ji now my next question to you it is something different i am going to ask you about uh, how much role it plays psychology of superstition ek andhavishwas hota hai na main ye ek shirt pehen ke jaau to mujhe shayad paper acha jayega ye ye yahi pen se main likhu I know my friend who was appearing for CA examination, और उसका भी एक अंधविश्वास था कि उसके पापा उसको अगर वो बाइक पे छोड़ छोड़ने के लिए आए तभी पेपर अच्छा आ जाएगा एंड दैट बाइक यूज टू बी वेरी ओल्ड टू व्हीलर तो जो आप एग्जाम्पल दे रहे थे ना कि टू व्हीलर स्टार्ट नहीं होता एंड आई एम एक्चुअली सीन इट एग्जामिनेशन के दरम्यान वो जब लेने के लिए बाबा पापा छोड़ने के लिए जाते थे वो बहुत बार दिक्कत देती थी पर फिर भी वही टू व्हीलर चाहिए तो ये साइकोलॉजी ऑफ सुपरस्टिशन कितने हद तक काम करता है does it have any role to play uh yes it 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 has a role to play because it gives you the attitude see um when i enter in the hall how much i know is the other one thing and with what approach i am looking at it it is an another thing so it's very important i start with the positive thing we should not have this this associations actually ki what happen how we become superstitious we have an association ki i wear a pink dress and uh, that day my exam was good the one day i wear a white dress and the exam was not good so i associate my dressing with my performance actually my performance is attached with my work that i have done but i don't attach i don't have association of it but then to a certain extent if it is helping you to perform better to a certain extent it's okay but otherwise um we have to really check on it but we should not do that before the exam it has to start very early like tomorrow exams are there or aap abhi bologe ki nahi nahi ye superstition hai chhod do to uska bacche ka pura mindset disturb ho jayega to rehne do and then after exam you have a discussion 
कि ये इसकी वजह से है क्या लाइक वॉट इज द रीजनिंग कि गाड़ी पे अगर नहीं जाता है तो ऐसा कितने बार हुआ है कि गाड़ी पे हम लोग नहीं गए और एग्जाम खराब हुआ है या तो हमको लाइक विल 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 गेट टू नो दैट ऐसे बहुत कम बार हुआ है वी जनरली हैव फोकसेस मतलब इफ यू हैव टेन इंसिडेंट्स दस बार आपने एग्जाम दिया तो पिंक ड्रेस में या गाड़ी पे हम लोग तीन ही बार गए होते हैं अदर सेवन वी हैव ओनली फ्रॉम दैट सेवन ओनली वन वॉज पुअर अदर वॉज अदर वे गुड बट वी डोंट फोकस ऑन दैट तो सुपरस्टिशन होता है बट इफ द एग्जाम अभी हो रहे एग्जाम तो उसको आप मत छेड़ो रहने दो एंड आफ्टर द एग्जाम प्लीज डू हैव अ डिस्कशन एंड लिसन टू वाई दे हैव दिस शॉर्ट ऑफ सुपरस्टिशन और ये सुपरसिशन जैसे मैंने पॉजिटिव साइड से बोला कि द मोमेंट यू कैरी अ पर्टिकुलर पेन देन इट गिव्स यू अ बेटर कॉन्फिडेंस कि हाँ मेरे पास वो पेन है तो एग्जैक्टली इन द सेम फैशन देर इज ऑल्सो बर्डन ऑफ बैगेज कि लास्ट टाइम जब ऐसा एग्जामिनेशन था तो मेरा ये परफॉर्मेंस था एंड नाउ अगेन द सेम सिचुएशन ऑन वेनजडे एग्जामिनेशन इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट सो इट इज गोइंग टू वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी मतलब हाउ आई एम ट्राइंग टू को रिलेटेड जैसे आपने कहा हाँ वो एक महीने में सही भी है आपने कहा कि एग्जामिनेशन इज जस्ट लाइक चेकिंग द बैग कि देखो आपका बैग अगर हम कहीं पे जा रहे घूमने के लिए तो हमने सब लिया क्या नहीं लिया पर जब मेरे जैसे साने सर ने कहा हाई स्टेक एग्जामिनेशन है या फिर घर वालों का भी प्रेशर है इट इज एग्जामिनेशन विच इज गोइंग टू डिसाइड माई स्ट्रीम आज तक तो जब तक न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इंप्लीमेंट नहीं होता तब तक तो टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड इज क्रुशल टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट क्योंकि उसके बाद मुझे ऑप्ट करना है साइंस कॉमर्स आर्ट्स तो वो एंगल से मैं ये बर्डन ऑफ बैगेज ये जो है जो पुरानी घटना है पुराना मेरा फेलियर है इसको कैसे मैं हैंडल करूं uh, हमको ना बात करनी पड़ेगी ठीक है तो मैं चाहूंगी कि एग्जाम के पहले ना हो ये बहुत पहले हो रादर एग्जाम मतलब पहली एग्जाम होते ही हम लोग उस पर बात करें कि भाई क्या हुआ है लाइक like, कितने मार्क्स आए rather talking about the marks and the number we should talk how you felt how what were your emotions rather ki mujhe dar laga ye hua to ye ye hua tab mujhe acha laga tha i was bit confident i was not confident and why bahut baar kya hota hai hum log na why ya what i felt hum us pe baat hi nahi karte as a parent as a society also हम लोग सिर्फ हाँ कितने मार्क्स मिले इतने मिले देन गुड इतने नहीं मिले दैट बैड मुझे मार्क्स अच्छे मिले बट स्टिल आई एम नॉट हैप्पी बिकॉज मुझे वो ना जो ऐसे था वो और अच्छा लिखना था सो द चाइल्ड मे हैव दिस फीलिंग्स तो इस बारे में अगर हम लोग बात करते हैं तो ये जो प्रेशर बिल्ड होता है ना वो प्रेशर बिल्ड नहीं होएगा लाइक द चाइल्ड विल बी मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन परफॉर्मिंग रादर देन द रिजल्ट बट एज अ पेरेंट्स एज अ सोसाइटी हम लोग रिजल्ट पे ही फोकस करते हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली बच्चे भी वही फोकस करेंगे तो इफ यू इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द प्रोसेस की हाउ वॉज द प्रोसेस ऑफ राइटिंग अ पेपर हाउ वॉज द प्रोसेस दैट हम लोगों ने वो क्वेश्चन लर्न किया था और वही आया है हम लोगों ने ये क्वेश्चन छोड़ दिया था और वो आया है सो हाउ वॉज द प्रोसेस हाउ यू फेल्ट अबाउट इट इस पे बात करते हैं अगर तो बच्चे को समझ में आएगा कि सीधे प्रोसेस इज इम्पोर्टेंट एट द एंड वो पेपर खत्म हो गया है अभी उसका कुछ नहीं हो सकता है पर अगली बार वेन हिल गो अगेन हिल हैव एन एग्जाम तो हिल थिंक ऑफ दिस कि दिस इज द प्रोसेस एंड आई हैव टू थिंक इन दैट वे तो दिस वुड टेक टाइम टू चेंज एटीट्यूड टू हैव डिफरेंट एसोसिएशन बट यस वी कैन स्टार्ट इट एंड दैट विल रियली हेल्प द चाइल्ड स्टूडेंट को भी पता नहीं चलता कि बाहर तो वो चीजें कर रहा है वो ऐसे कुछ एक्शन करता है यस आई एव प्रिपेयर वेल यस आई एम गोइंग टू पास दिस एग्जामिनेशन और उसके अंदर शायद वो डायलॉग है जैसे आपने कहा वो निगेटिव है और उसको भी वो अंदाजा नहीं है कि अंदर वो कुछ निगेटिव बोल रहा है या समझाने की कोशिश कर रहा है पर बाहर कुछ और दिखा रहा है और पेरेंट्स को या बाकी जो आजू बाजू के लोग हैं उनको भी नहीं समझ में आता तो एग्जैक्टली उसको कैसे वो अवेयरनेस में लाए कि यू आर क्रिएटिंग और यू आर शोइंग समथिंग यू आर डिपेक्टिंग सम एक्शन तो कुछ दिखाने की कोशिश कर रहा है पर शायद आप अंदर से उतना कॉन्फिडेंट नहीं हो इज इट नेसेसरी टू मेक हिम अवेयर माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड इफ यूज देन हाउ टू ब्रिंग दैट अवेयरनेस अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी के नॉट मेक द अदर पर्सन अवेयर He or she herself himself have to be aware of it. तो क्या होगा हम लोग we can have a process कि like when you are going what you were thinking 
what you felt ha huh? so if he he if the child or if the person is talking about what he felt and what he was thinking that is something he is related to self talk तो वो उसको खुद को उसका प्रोसेसर क्योंकि वो बात कर भी रहा है कि नहीं कर रहा है द ओनली पर्सन नोज इज द पर्सन हिमसे तो मैं मुझे ही पता है कि मैं अपने आप से क्या बात कर रही हूँ पर अभी बच्चे को समझ में आ रहा है कि सब सबसे पहले फर्स्ट थिंग इज वी हैव टू बी अवेयर दैट वी टॉक टू अवर सेल्फ बहुत बार ऐसा था वी डोंट नो इट इज सो ऑटोमेटिक दैट वी वी रेयरली हैव एनी वी लुक टूवर्ड्स इट so the first thing is we have to look to so, iske liye hum log thoda retroaction bhi kar sakte hain ki like if something behavior is happening what what you were feeling or what were your thoughts behind it to so, is tarike se hum wo khud ko awareness wo laega agar hum log is tarike se baat karte hain ki we should tell what we should tell to ourselves see um i i can we can have a relation see when you are in stress our four fathers used to my grandmother my grandparents used to say ki he mantra man मग तुला बरं वाटेल राईट त्या मंत्राने आय डोंट नो दॅट मंत्र रिअली हेल्प मी ऑर नॉट बट वेन आय नाव थिंक फ्रॉम सायकोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू इट इज लाईक दॅट लाईक आय स्टॉप्ड माय निगेटिव्ह सेल्फ टॉक माय फोकस वॉज फ्रॉम दॅट निगेटिव्ह सेल्फ टॉक टू समथिंग एल्स सो आय डोंट नो द मंत्र हॅज हेल्प मी ऑर नॉट बट डेफिनेटली माय सेल्फ टॉक इज रिड्यूस्ड अँड दॅट हॅज हेल्प मी so this is something that that is there in our culture only thing is that we have to like understand the science behind it and once the child knows it ki see this is the reason why we are told this way so slowly he or she will also learn it and the person has to get aware of it uh, we cannot make the person aware that's that's thank you, thank, you, thank you thank you very much yeah i think dr sane our one of the participant kinjal has many question kinjal would you like to ask your questions sir am i audible enough yeah yeah you are very much audible please go ahead yes ma'am thank yeah. you so much ma'am for uh, addressing us on this issue because mainly students have this in their life ki exams are a big thing for us so uh, if you are telling if you are guiding us on these things it's so nice because right now this is the very main thing which we have in our schools tuitions and all so i would like to start with uh, ma'am this time i gave my exams but um, just a day before i wrote all the formulas on a separate sheet and uh, i um, forgot to revise those formulas and in exams i saw that i uh, literally i was blanked out i couldn't uh, recall the formulas and uh, so uh, after that after my exam i checked so i did wrong the whole question i did i was mistaken with the formula so it was um, whole wrong so um, i don't know that just a day before i wrote the formula i did my things but i couldn't recall it in the exam why it happened so okay why it happened uh, there are many reasons the first reason is emotional blocking if you are too much pressurized um, and you try it very hard so you many a times there are blockages so that blockages might have um, disturb you you could not recall it right and the second is see when you write it down um you you use your hands and your eyes so uh, the input memory is by two devices that is your eyes and your skin uh, sensory organs so what we can do is now is you can use some color pencils uh, for the formulas different formulas and you can uh, read it aloud bit louder so that what happens is um, your picture memory becomes stronger as you are seeing Uh, as you are speaking it you are you are saying it loud so you are using your tongue and as you are saying it loud you can hear it and you are writing it so with the five sense from the five sorry from the five sense organs you are using a uh, four sense organs and when you were writing it was only your eyes and hands so input by input was by two and now if you say it loud and with the color pencils so it would be like four sense organs input so uh, next time you can definitely remember better and sometimes it happens that you don't remember right so don't make it generalize ki i don't remember i wrote it and i don't remember there might be some some formulas you might have written and you might have remembered also right 
so it is mm. like uh, from 10 1 you could not remember but 9 you could remember so we'll focus on 9 and we will work for this one rather making it generalize ki maine likha tha but i don't remember it will not uh, focus it we'll just work on that one and 9 you have remembered so good isn't mm. it yeah uh, ma'am a uh, second question i would like to ask that uh, i was uh, studying first in Gu- uh, in central board and now i changed to gujarat board so here the policy is to uh, ask the whole syllabus in the last exam so this wasn't the case in my school so i'm uh, very much confused that how can you revise the whole syllabus or maybe uh, 10 to 15 chapters in a single subject just a day before an exam it's okay. too difficult to complete yes see um if you are going uh, for a, for a garba dance huh? as you are from gujarat so i would uh, give you this example so um, the day like evening you want to go for garba so in morning do you uh, you open the cupboard and search for the dress or you have in your mind say i have this four dresses which are there down and we'll just open that or do you uh, open the cupboard and see all the punjabi dress also your jeans also and your gagras also do you do that no we keep no. it in the mind yes you you will only search in only in gagras you will not go in jeans and punjabi dress right same what we can do is you have 11 chapters every chapter has something very unique in it which will cover the thing right so you have to write those points you don't have to read the complete chapter in one chapter if for example if it has six pages and five sub topics in a chapter so every sub topic can be summarized in two sentence so so one chapter having six pages having five sub points can be converted into 10 sentence similarly for every chapter so before a day when you are revising you will not go with the whole chapter you will just see the 10 word 10 lines that you have written and then you can remember the things again you can use the input the more input the more memory you will have so whenever you are writing the points also you can use color pencils because see picture memory is much more stronger than your auditory memory so if our picture memory you can have a have a sequence like first sentence or the first point you will write in black then blue then red and then green if you have a color otherwise you can use this three alternatively uh, black blue and red black blue and red so you will have that picture in your mind so whenever you are remembering you will understand oh after blue it was black and black and then red and then ah this is something so this will help you you have to make a short notes for every chapter and then read it or for questions also you can write if you have a question and the answers in that answer there are few words which are very important which tells everything about that and then you elaborate those things so you just have to write those words or those point at the side so you can just see those and then you can remember this so this is the technique you can use it ma'am uh, alternate to the this can we highlight in the textbook with different highlighters <laughs> so it will be also uh, easy to this write. is a shortcut key because then uh, our skin see when you write by your hands uh, there is a memory which is there you have a muscle memory when you write so why we ask students to write rather many a times we tell in the class to write and they say madam we will type on laptop we say don't type on laptop because when you type on laptop it is um, it is automatic because you know a s where it is so you type it but when you write it you have a muscle memory for it so please do write because you have picture memory you have muscle memory memory so when you have more inputs the output would be better so don't highlight highlight please do write and uh, as sanes sir has also said you can uh, uh, handwriting while writing it will help you when you write in exam also that will help you practice right yeah yes ma'am and ma'am this time also i faced um, like um, just a day before my exams uh, my friends were calling me ki can you please explain me this can you please explain me that so my whole day i uh, was uh, tackling with my friends who were a bit panic and at last i found that uh, even i am uh, unprepared for the exams i 
uh, was awake till midnight i did and i tried my best but the next day my exams didn't uh, go up to my expectation as i expected ki nahi i can do this so um means how can i handle this thing ki um uh, managing myself my work along with this okay so you have to make choices you cannot make everyone happy right so what you can do is uh, you can tell your friends that from this to this time i am available you can ask me question but then after this time i want to study it for myself i am very sorry for that so those who friends who ask you can tell see from 10 to 12 in the morning i am available any doubts you can ask me after 12 i'll be studying for my own i won't be able to answer your question i am very sorry for that i i like from your bottom of heart you can write very good words you can use and say sorry for it and then have for you and a, a day before a, a proper sleep is really very important because when when you sleep your brain makes the compartments neat and tidy and if you don't sleep it is untidy unorganized and maybe because of that you could not remember the things so it's very important you sleep proper a uh, day before your exams okay so tell your friends that this is the time you can ask me i am available after this time it is closed time you are not open yes ma'am and yeah. ma'am uh, certainly when we talk to our friends right so they tell us ki uh, i'm i'm going to study waking up at 4 uh, o'clock waking up at 3 o'clock and then certainly certainly i have a question in my mind that um, they are working so hard so am i also putting in all my efforts and uh, sometimes you know it's a bit uh, like uh, competing with each other so certainly i feel that ki if she is doing so much so i should have i should also put in my efforts and uh, when i am not able to wake up till a certain time which i have which i have decided i feel really bad and the starting of the day is a bit uh, you know it's mm. a bad so that so how should i remain unaffected with my with what my friends do or with what they tell me what they advise me right you know the story of uh, uh, there was one donkey and a son and a father they were going so everyone was laughing to them that the donkey is there and you are walking so the son sits on the donkey and then everyone again laughs see the father is walking and the son is sitting on how how poor then the father sits and the son walks and everyone says see how how is the father he is sitting and ask, like making the son walk so then again both of them sat on the donkey so again everyone was laughing and saying that see the poor donkey both are sitting on the donkey and at the end it was really difficult for them so don't listen to everyone it is their choice they may sit on the donkey they may walk they may run what you want to do do you want to study for this much time or do you want to complete the things i know it comes for a, for a time being you compare you feel that oh i'm not working see they are studying so hard but then everyone is different have a counter this is self talk so say stop to your self talk and say that i am studying and that's okay this is my style right so you tell yourself mm-hmm. this is my style this is their style it is their style to study maybe uh, for a long time for me i study whole day and i have a good night sleep so you have to tell yourself okay yes ma'am yeah thank you ma'am thank you yeah, thank it's you all don't the best and don't all. worry don't compare it all and it's not the question of comparison of hours uh, there may be two students one will study for 2 hours and the other will study for 10 hours it is a quality matters the quality time that you devote and to your prior question i just had uh, i heard uh, many of your friends were uh, asking you is ka answer kya hai uska answer kya hai uh, on the prior day of exam Uh, madam has rightly told you have to be you have to decide your time when you can do that but remember uh, concepts can be best mm. understood by anyone mm. by explaining to others yeah so don't lose that opportunity but uh, make it available for without affecting your own status that's what i guess thank you thank you sunny sir 
Sane sir, further two questions. Again, you again the same uh, phrase I will use: high stake examination. Uh -huh. And I will I will quote a chartered accountancy examination, CA. I mean, jokingly, right. few people say that CA itself means come again. <laughs> so in, in in many in many cases, I observed that student appear for the first day of the CA examination paper. The examination paper is not so good, at least for that particular student, and uh, he declares the results. For him on that day itself, that I am not going to pass for a CA examination unless and until you don't pass all the subjects of that particular group, you are expected to reappear the entire group. So you cannot disassociate the first paper from the second and the third paper of the same group. So how to how how you will advise the students that you should not judge yourself uh, before the results and to avoid this particular habit of not appearing or not preparing well for the next paper. So if at all uh, we are talking about um, exams like TA and ICWA and for that matter, any other really tough examination, uh, while there's a great amount of preparation that is needed. And uh, uh, without that, probably one need not attempt that examination. But I have seen two kind of people. Uh, one, they know that I'm not going to clear that exam in one go, but they would like to get the uh, test of it. They, they would say test the water and <laughs> then really try doing it. Uh, and a uh, lot of patience will be required. It is not only for CA, but I have seen some of my students who are preparing for UPSC, MPSC examinations. And uh, uh, almost seven years, eight years of time. But they are determined. Yeah. They are absolutely determined. They want to do that. Uh, sorry, I really did not get your exact question. Otherwise, I'll be yeah, then how, talking how to, something how to, else. How to guide such a student that don't judge yourself immediately on the day of examination itself. Appear for the full examination. Yeah, yeah. That, that I, anyway, I told. Uh, hmm. Once the paper is over, just don't, ideally, you should not think about it. And you are, I should be on the next paper. And as you rightly said, that you need to clear all the questions, all the papers in such exams. It is highly essential. Right. Uh, it is very easy to speak, but we know <laughs> that uh, we ourselves know no, what mistakes we have done. Correct. So uh, in that situation, it is difficult, but then you need to train yourself like that. You just need to just forget about it. Oh, that has <laughs> that, to be that. Yeah, yeah. And as, as regards question paper is concerned, as far as uh, my observation, specifically related to higher education examination papers, generally every type of whatever it is examination, the question paper will consist of only four types of questions. One is a definition based question, second is opinion based question, third is a situation based question, and fourth is a numerical. So any advice to the student, how to identify and decide that what you are best at and start solving that? Yeah, uh, this uh, the capabilities will vary from student to student. As you mentioned, there are four, four or six different types of questions. And it is that uh, during the preparation, especially when you are doing a mock kind of thing, one needs to evaluate on their own. And sometimes uh, I will also advise that at least first two, three question paper solving, uh, you need to approach your teacher and mm -hmm. find out from them uh, how what is your performance. And that will really tell them in what kind of, what kind of uh, uh, type of questions they are good at. That is one way of doing it. But numerical, as I already told, yeah. I don't think there is any alternative. You know thoroughly the topic, you will do it. But for the others, yes, it varies. It, yeah. I'm not saying that the person is not having the knowledge, but it sometimes 
probably depends on some essay kind of writing the student one student will be good the other will not yeah, yeah. and there are no easy ways but mock taking mocks and getting at least one or two evaluated from your teacher and uh, that will tell you correct correct thank you thank you sir and there is one one saying when i used to appear for my ca examination people used to advise that better answers to all questions fetch more marks than few best answers any take on this <laughs> i won't be able to comment on ca examination directly no no not ca but in general or for higher education they used to say better answers to all questions fetch more marks than few best answers so is is that a proper strategy a proper way or not just your opinion not really ideally it is not okay okay thank you thank you sir and the last questions to both of you there are two questions number one question that how much is the important role that parents play in overall education of that particular child particularly referring to two examples which sane sir has quoted and the second question is uh, whether the counseling of the parents is more required for examination whether it is a school examination or it is a higher education examination so opinion from both of you because basically for higher education we don't get a chance to discuss with the parents until school 9 10 standard people are there people coming to, parents are coming to the school there are pta meetings there is interaction with the teacher but after that there is a completely what you can say absence of communication between the teachers and the parents so how, how far it is important in the overall process okay i'll answer this first then we'll go to sane sir uh, it's really very important parents are the key uh, role to play in the child's Uh, examination, the environment. So you have to have balance. It should not be too easy. Ki karna hai to karo, nahi to mat karo. Yeah, like a gun. Ki why you have moved from this position to this position. So you have to be balanced. Um, taking care. No, having realistic uh, talk with the child. Uh, discussion with the child related to the exams. What they are thinking. Um, what new things are there? See after certain. Uh, age of parents also uh, there is there are no discussions there is a interrogations they have questions and the child has to answer it and as and the teenager is the worst period for the parents at least nowadays we are seeing that a lot because uh, the child has their own thought and they say ki tumhala kalat nahi you don't understand it is not your age this this is something different but if as a parents if we are open and try to listen really listen uh, rather than just giving answers and asking question if you really listen to the child i think most of the kids are quite clear with the thoughts and if they are not when they talk with the parents parents can help them to just clear the thought rather than telling them do this and do that because this generation have lots of choices and they have made their choices so um parents who are from the millennial uh, may may not have the choices so uh, they might think ki hamare waqt to aisa nahi tha but the the times have changed so parents play a really very important role in higher education of the child the attitude the approach everything so uh, one take if we want for parents to take is that talk to your child and listen to rather talk listen to your child what he want he or she wants to tell you that's all wow, thank you thank you madam yes yeah, sane sir yeah <clears throat> parents role is crucial no doubt about that and i completely agree with it. it's a perfect answer given by madam uh, what i feel uh, we are talking only about higher education and if, uh, generally now it is known that in a class of 60 there are at least 10 students who really don't want to do the course which mm -hmm. they have admitted to mm -hmm. and this number is slightly increasing year after year and the reason is it is the pressure from the parents yeah. and as rightly said that we know better than you we are giving you this option for your betterment like that blah blah, blah. 
So hmm. the role will be for a parent is to just provide the options available and if they can provide the pros and cons of it and leave the decision to the child. And uh, if that starts happening, then uh, uh, then there will be really a joy uh, for the student to make a study on. Otherwise, you will find it, invariably you will find in a class of 120 students, if you talk them personally, that's why most of the higher education institutes, they are now having counselors because mm. students will not talk to parents, definitely. They will not talk to even teachers also. Mm. They will talk to the counselor. And when they talk to the counselor, ultimately they will tell you that actually I don't want to do this, then, but I was forced to do so. So... I think parents' role is only to provide the guy. Sort of a upon one to na ki pani kute kute aaye he daakhwaye chahe and wo kaha pe pani hai wo batana hai kaha pe pina hai yo bachon ko chhodna hai. But this with the assumption that parents have a knowledge, but there are students also where there is no guidance at home. In that case, they are more lucky. <laughs> That's all. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Vaishali, you have a question? Uh, no, actually, there is a question in a chat from our student. Uh, so, uh, it is exactly on the same topic uh, what we are talking uh, the, right now. Uh, I mean, uh, where parents are not supporting uh, the child's desires. So, my question is then uh, uh, please uh, you can answer directly to the student. Uh, the question is that parents aren't helping with uh, what he wants to like. Uh, like, uh, uh, I am studying in 11th commerce, but I want to focus on my cricket. They are just telling and uh, telling that after 12th, he has to go abroad and study for CA. Uh, so, how to do deal with this kind of situations? Uh, please go and take help of a counselor. So that where you can have the aptitude testing, the IQ testing, and really an interest testing, because the child is saying he wants to play cricket, but is he really capable, have that potential or not? Everything has to be seen. And then I think uh, just telling randomly that listen to your parents or don't listen to your parents. Uh, what I think is you have to go to a counselor, talk to him, and then sort it down, sit with parents. Both the parent and child should sit and then have a discussion and then solve the problem. That's what I'd like to add. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope uh, he has got the answer. Kinjal also has question. Yeah, Kinjal. Yes, sir. Just one last question with uh, Open Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, um, suppose my exam starts from 8 o'clock and it's, it ends at uh, 10, 10 a.m. And after that, I uh, come to home at 10.30. So later on, I have ample time, like the whole day, to prepare for the next day, next exam. So uh, I want to know how should I distribute my time and uh, how much uh, time should I give to relax myself or take a break? Like it should be two hours, a good sleep, three, four hours. I, I'm not exactly sure about that because in that case, I uh, think that I faced uh, a lot of my time. Okay. See, relaxation won't come from watching TV, seeing mobile. So relaxation will come by uh, maybe if you can sit quiet, uh, you can sing, you can draw any activity that you yourself you are doing. Now, watching TV, listening to music. Uh, seeing on mobile will will not relax you. Uh, your brain will be more activated over there, so will not relax. So how much time is really a difficult to tell because um, 
your body needs certain amount of time to relax so you have to work you have to understand your body so after coming home you can just lay down have deep breathing and see what is going on how how you are breathing how it is going on and just see that every muscles so this is a relaxation technique you can google it it is called as a jacobian muscular relaxation technique okay so you can do this it is available uh, freely available on net so when you come home uh, just lie down and relax every muscle listen like calm music is going on and i think in a half hour you will feel relax so if you do that and um, i'm not say ki con- study continuous for like 10 hours or something you can study for a time take a break and very important what you do in that break again no tv no mobile you can talk to your parents um, you can just go around like that so that can help you uh, to relax and how much time again i'll say time won't be a constraint like like sane sir uh, previously said that maybe in 2 hours you can revise everything so it's okay then you have to relax but you you should not see tv and mobile for that matter you can have other options for relaxation these two options are not available because they don't relax your brain okay so other things you can do okay kinjit yes, yes ma'am yeah that was very simply smart answer thank you ma'am for figuring thank it you. out thank you and i for i me. hope all the best and relax exams for you thank you so much ma'am yes yes thank you thank you yeah over, over to ajit sir <laughs> i think already a lot of things have been discussed yeah yeah probably it is a little late for everyone yeah. including the faculties are concerned Yes. Uh, because there are a lot of questions i had but i think probably this is not the right forum possibly or not the right time to discuss especially i mean we have a two views you know one is the traditional viewpoint towards uh, towards preparing for the exam and one is a contemporary something which is happening today and probably i think we have not talked to any of the faculties about this and this is too short a time to brief them but uh, dr aparna ji as well as dr sane ji I think there's something which we have been working for the last 15, 17 years, so or 18 years rather, 2004 onwards. And we studied uh, 10,000 students in India and even abroad, the new generation. And there are certain revealing facts, you know, which we have come across. And we have identified 28 personality traits which are so different for this generation, as compared to any generations in the past. And more or less, we have found out the time between 1985, 90, and more so after 2000. there is some kind of a structural uh, restructuring of the dna you know and this is something which is very very interesting aspect the third strand out of the 12 strands in the third strand actually was called a jung strand by uh, jung dna by many scientists before but suddenly we have realized it is no longer a jung it is something which we knew never knew about and probably we stamped it as a jung but so- suddenly it has come into the forefront and that has changed the whole uh, personality of the human now somewhere these children are extremely intellectual but it cost to their mind and mind consciousness as well as the emotional consciousness somewhere i think this is not a generation gap that we have been handling all these years it is something structural gap and somewhere we have found out maybe there are about 20 different kind of finding we have 35 findings out of which some of the relevant one about the studies is the children are absolutely fearful of failure they just don't like to fail and they cannot handle their failure probably it never happened in the generation that i belong to or maybe generations 1985 before we could handle our and secondly i think probably the social system the joint family as dr sane ji said some times ago is or you you yourself said aparna ji ki tell me dada dadi somebody will say okay relax and this and that some way i think we have gone into a nuclear family that is one both of them husband and wife putting a pressure on the child and nobody to absorb that pressure so somewhere the social system the uh, community system i think everything is a little more different much different than what it was before so that apart these children i mean uh, what brings out is they don't like to be corrected they are spontaneous they are volatile now because their mind is not uh, in the right sense uh, we, we were not as intellectual probably as this people were and uh, another thing which you have found out very drastically which makes a lot of difference with exams they are very slow writers they cannot complete they cannot write they hate to write 
unfortunately whole examination system is about what you read not what you know you know we are trying to understand what he has understood through the writing as a medium and unfortunately on this medium they're extremely low and as sometimes ago i think you uh, dr pranaji said that it, it, i mean when you write you know that muscle memory etc etc comes out very fine and some way that, that it is related to the consciousness of the mind when we have studied the whole idea of uh, studies you know we realize that accepting the first stage out of the six the reading writing looking hearing they are physical as well as the last one when you express when you write the four processes in between storing understanding assimilating and retrieving are happening within the zone of the mind and the generally we call it a chitta mind emotions intellect you know and that is where they are getting a lot of beating they don't uh, they are not so clear and and because you know we are also identified certain thing because we are i'm discussing because you know that has direct relevance to the uh, exams you know they they they, they just uh, uh, don't have that kind of uh, purity they are they are already crossed over yama niyama you know whatever the patanjali say the first five stages they are already crossed around they are they are the pratyaharis they use one sense at a time you know i mean sometimes ago aparna ji used the word junk food they don't have to but i think somewhere the whole idea of junk food is so different for them what our generation thought was a junk is no longer a junk for them and that is something which they love and at the same time we are also saying that they should eat what they love so that is where the contradictions actually start coming up you know because they are so different than what we have. we, we ap- approach the process through the attitude of mind and the approach of the mind and secondly they are extremely ambitious you know at the same time and ambitions which are not necessarily supported by the ability in fact we have developed a, a index you know measurement of ambitions versus ability index and many a times you find the index is so low they want to achieve something they want to become like an ambani and they want to have all the luxuries in their life but without making the efforts what ambani is probably made or maybe any industry is must have made so somewhere they are disconnected from the efforts and another thing which i find you know i mean the, Dr. Sani ji said wonderfully that one has to prepare right from the first. I mean, it's not a last-minute preparation that really helps. You know, that's what we did. But somewhere or other, nowadays I'm seeing that the preparation, the whole exercise comes out of fear. Fear is the base for that. If I don't do, I'm I'm going to fail. If I don't do, I'm going to fail. That failure is about. Like many a times I'm seeing the uh, sickness. You know, when we are talking of the healing, a lot of people ask me this question. Oh, this fellow is going to the gym. This fellow is going for a Um, morning jog, jogging, and everything was done. But still, he had a heart attack at the age of forty-two. How did it happen? See, it's not the activity; it is the driving factor behind the activity which actually decides. And if you look at the society also today, we have a lot of fear: fear of heart attack at the young age, fear of blood pressure, fear of diabetes. Same thing happening in the exam for the children. The driving force behind their effort should never be fear. No, and unfortunately, I think because of the competitive. Uh, examinations and a lot of things at the stake, as as we normally talk of high stake exams. You know, somewhere I think they just can't uh, manage. In fact, you know, if you read the Nimhan's uh, statistics of suicide, I think it has never been so bad than for the last about two thousand seventeen onwards. If you look at, in fact, you know, Gujarat government invited us because in Surat last year, forty five suicides happened within twenty four hours after declaration of exams, twelfth exam. So somewhere in Kota, in the University of Rajasthan, we have been working with them also, and uh, I think new education policy is trying to uh, tone down the whole effect. You know? But something I think we'll have to take a cognizance that this generation probably demands a different kind of approach, different kind of uh, attitude towards the exams. And also, I think somewhere I always uh, ask the parents, you know, to play a major role into that. Unfortunately, parents are not aware. and for the last about 15 years my mission is to create that awareness among the parents teachers and we have been moving all, all around the world and we have come out with three books on this to say that how this generation is so different because unless we understand and appreciate and open to the problem which is there is actually a situation though i won't call like to call it a problem but if the situation is not understood it becomes a problem over a period of time so somewhere i think that um, understanding i mean the questions also have a listening to kinjal and all you know getting blanked out at the last minute because there's so much of a stress so much at the stake at the same time i mean i look at my life and we we did a couple of post graduations and all i don't think uh, at any point of time i could imagine there was a stressor you know because 
I mean, we, we perform to the best of our abilities. And today, I think we are trying to understand that you have to perform to the best of somebody else's abilities. You know, because somebody is getting 92 percentile and you need to get that 93, but your abilities is only 83, 84. So are you giving 100 percent of your uh, potentials? No, I think it is more about the potentials and the abilities. So somewhere, I mean, I, I would like to comment on that and uh, because I know there's not much of a time to discuss and debate, but definitely I would request Pranjalji to have another sessions like this, you know, where I think we can uh, discuss this threadbare. It's not about only one exam. It's about the whole life, I think. If you look at the hmm. situation around, right. it's all over the world. I mean, it's not about India alone. It's universal yeah. phenomenon. And I think this is called, normally we call it an ascension of the human being. You know, we are moving toward the fourth dimension and all that stuff, you know, which is very uh, in-depth kind of a thing. But somewhere I think we should take a cognizance and we should be at least uh, appreciating this point. So to understand what kind of profile of the student sitting in front of the teacher is so different today as compared to about uh, 25, 30 years ago. You know, so we need to address his uh, or her uh, anxieties and, uh, and attitudes and the abilities and the approaches, which is so different. So thank you very much for patient listening. And I'm sure at some point of time, we'll uh, meet on the way and uh, discuss this for, for the betterment of the society at large. No, so thank you, Pranjal, for giving uh, me also an opportunity. But, uh, thank you, thank I, you, I sir. Appreciate that. I appreciate mean, what uh, Dr. Pranaji and Dr. Sanish Sanish has said. It's amazingly. I mean, that must have helped a lot of students today. And uh, uh, I, think, I think that that looked to be the right kind of. Uh, I mean, the questions also were uh, appropriate and they addressed it so beautifully. So thank you very much, Dr. Pranaji and Dr. Sanish sir, for being on this forum, and we look forward to seeing you again on this forum at some point of time. It would be great pleasure for us. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And nicely uh, said thoughts, sir. Actually, we would have discussed this point also. Carbon yeah. generation. <laughs> but, <laughs> was, I think, short. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. but I think there will be an opportunity for us to discuss at some point. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I yeah. look forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. I think all, all of us have to put our heads together, you know the teachers, the parents, the counselors, no, because they're going to be a huge problem. And uh, it's, it's not about uh, the growth. I think it's about survival of the humans. We don't mm -hmm. address it properly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Once again, thank everybody, including DSPPL management for organizing this. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you, Dr. Aparna. Thank you, Dr. Sane. Thank you, all the audience. Thank you. I will be ending the meeting here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.